looking to make it two in a row this afternoon. All the action at the vet. Florida A&M, the opponent, started in the first quarter. The first Temple play of the game, Lee Sals drops back the pass, and boy, is he going to pass way downfield. Keith Gloucester is down there. He hauls it in for a 50-yard scoring play. It looked like a cakewalk early. Not so. FAMU comes right back. Quarterback Oscar Williams was poised. He goes over the middle and hits a wide-open Rodney Bowling. It was 7-7. The Rattlers came to play. The Owls were rattling a bit on both sides of the line early, but they shook it off. Todd McNair helps the Temple cause with a four-yard burst into pay dirt. Temple jumped out in front 14-7. They rolled after that. Number six Heisman candidate Paul Palmer rushed for 202 yards. He scores. Temple won at 38-17. FAMU came to play, and the Owls had a slow start. We have a tendency to relax a little bit. We get up on people and we, we relax a little bit and we give them the feeling of confidence that they can play with us. We have to learn how to stay consistent and stay on top of them. All right. Boston College upset Maryland 30-25. to Big surprise. Kentucky is falling to Mississippi 26-13 in the fourth quarter. And Paul Palmer of Temple rushed for 349 yards, tied the NCAA all-purpose yardage record with 417 yards as Temple beat East Carolina 45-28. Paul Palmer, you may never see him. He is probably the best, only marginally well-known running back in college football. He's against East Carolina, and Paul Palmer got a little help from his friends on the offensive line and went wild. Number six rushed for 349 yards today. Eight shy of the NCAA record. He did everything, probably even drove the team bus back to campus. He shattered the previous school record of 281 yards on 39 carries, of which he owned a record 43 carries. 45-28 Temple, just short of the NCAA mark. I'm disappointed for myself, but also for the people at Temple and my teammates because I think they may have wanted the record a little more than I did. But it was nice getting to run. All right, check the numbers. Temple 45-28 in South State and Clemson over Virginia. Three carries today for 349 yards, 20 yards on this carry. Then the most explosive effort, 78 right here. Shot out of a cannon, it looks like. Temple will win it 45 to 28. After the ball game, Paul credits his offensive line for giving him such an effort today. Here's Paul Palmer. This game will, will really help them out a great deal and really make them feel good about themselves. And, and I'll continue to try to make them feel good about themselves because they really do do a good job for me. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, prove to people that my teammates and I are for real. I think this is a pretty good indication of that. Oh, yes it is. Not only is it a Temple school record, but let's see how it stacks up nationally. 349 yards rushing is the fourth best total of all time in big time college football. Ended up eight yards shy of the record. If he had in his kickoff returns today, his total yardage was 417 yards, which ties Paul for the most yardage ever in one game by one guy. So he ties a record, set almost set another, no doubt his bid for the Heisman Trophy is enhanced by from their punches versus Virginia Tech. That's Chris D'Amico adding some punch there. But the real power pack man was Paul Palmer. He kept running at the heart of the Hokies defense. A 12-yard scamper here. And a touchdown play right there. Watch the way he moves so well. 7-0. Temple has the lead. On the day Paul scored, uh, had a school record of 44 carries for 239 yards. Virginia Tech cut the lead to 20-7, to but the Owls fake to Palmer, go deep to Lee Sauce passing to Keith Gloucester, 53 yards on the play. That'll seal the victory, 29-13 Temple with the man of the day, Paul Palmer. We have Don Tollefson in Norfolk, Virginia. Here's Don. Gary, we've got Paul Palmer, the man of the hour in Norfolk, Virginia at the Oyster Bowl. What people can't see at home is the cut fingers, the cut knuckles. This was a physical football game. Oh yeah, very much so. Uh, we were getting after it. They were getting after it, and a couple of our ball players are beat up, and I'm sure a couple of our ball players are beat up also. You had an offensive line that had a start from new this year, with all the guys from last year graduating. The job they have done so quickly is phenomenal. Oh yeah, it, it's awesome, really. I think last year my offensive line was great, and this year I think this offensive line compares with them very well. A lot of people early in the season didn't give them the credit that I think that they deserved, but now. Since the yardage is stacking up and all the skills this is doing so well, you have to give him credit. 349 last week, unofficially 237 today. Paul Palmer very much in the hunt for the Heisman and the Maxwell. Oh yeah, very much so. I think not only am I in the hunt, but I think my, team, my teammates in the hunt also. Big win for you guys today. Very big, very big. Paul Palmer with a big day. The Temple Owls with a big day as they go to 5-2. and two. Very much in the hunt for a bowl bid. I'm Don Tollison, Channel 6 Action News with Oyster Bowl MVP Paul Palmer. Officially, it was 239 today for Paul Palmer. He had 588 yards in the last couple of games. That is an NCAA record for Paul Palmer. On the season in seven games, he's gained now 
1,233 yards on the ground. And next week, Paul and the rest of the Owls will host Syracuse. Penn State defeated the Orangemen today. Goal with 3.20 left in the third quarter. So the breaks have gone the way of the Temple Owls here in the second half. Let's see if they can carry. Who are you going to get the ball to in this situation? i got to give it to number six. So does Lee Falk. Palmer. To the shadow of the goal line goes Paul Palmer down inside the one-yard line. Try to hold them if they can. They've done it once before. It's second and goal from the one. Power eye for Temple. Stevenson's in there. 26 leading the block. And Palmer, touchdown. touchdown. Paul Palmer's second touchdown of the game. And the Owls have taken the lead on the one-yard run by Paul Palmer. It's a simple power play. They're in that wishbone formation, and here's the two lead backs. They give it to Palmer. The offensive line does a good job of coming off the blocks, and he takes it in for another touchdown. On the season, Palmer now with 13 rushing touchdowns. He holds the record in that department as well. 20 offensive records for Paul Palmer, and Bruce Arians a lot more satisfied with this second half than he was in the first. The Owls have taken the lead, 15 points here already, and the Owls are going to try to line up and go for two. Let's see what happens. They got Palmer behind Poole in the eye. Marshall's put out wide to the right, and now Salt will call a timeout. He'll check the defense for Temple, and he'll chat with his head coach, Bruce Arians, and the coaching staff on the sidelines. Temple leading 15 to 14. And I guess they're thinking here is Lynn to uh, put two more up, and uh, that would mean that a field goal at least wouldn't beat them. Well, that's right. They've got to take advantage of the opportunity, and they're going to try to do that right here because one point doesn't make the difference in the ball game unless you're on the top side and they don't score again. So this is good strategy, and a field goal won't beat them. It would tie them, however. Still plenty of time left, of course, in the game. Two minutes and 39 seconds. Paul Palmer, number six, has rushed for two touchdowns today. He is closing in on his average of 176 yards. Let's see if we can update. We actually have him now unofficially, 160 yards and two touchdowns. Dick McPherson trying to hitch it up there on the sidelines as Arians goes over the call on the two-point conversion try with his quarterback, Lee Saltz, on Barry, the other I've side really the been impressed with uh, what uh, Temple has done, obviously, at halftime in terms of making adjustments against the Orange Men. They've done a good job of stifling their offensive attack, and likewise, they've done an excellent job of capitalizing on opportunities and moving the ball up the field and, of course, behind Paul Palmer. All-American Heisman Trophy candidate. The Owls are 0 for 3 in two-point conversions this season. Let's see what happens here on their fourth drive. Motion, Johnson, get it. Nope, it's all it. And he's in. Hopkins. Big hand drop to Paul Palmer and Lee Falk kept it for two points. And the Owls now have a three-point separation and the lead over Syracuse. Time at Temple. Paul Palmer over 170 yards rushing in the game. Right now it is close. 24-17. Syracuse on its way to a possible upset with 10 and a half minutes to go. In the game, Syracuse cruised out to a 14-0 lead. As Temple drove to the Syracuse one-yard line but did not get into the end zone, Palmer carried only one time. Syracuse came back down the field, 99 yards, scoring on that 14-yard run by McPherson. Later, Palmer got his first touchdown in the third quarter to narrow a 14-2 margin to 14-9. And then, on a touchdown and a two-point conversion, Palmer provided that one. It was tied up at 17 apiece. But just moments ago, Syracuse broke that tie. Harold Gaydon with his second touchdown, 15 yards out, 24-17 Syracuse. Gaydon's two TDs, the first two scored by a Syracuse running back this year. Beat Temple 38-29, but Paul Palmer of Temple, over 200 yards rushing, passed by Marinaro and Marcus Allen on the career list. He's now seventh. Senior day at Veterans Stadium. The final home performance for the finest group of skilled position players in Temple Owls history. By day's end, quarterback Lee Saltz would set a series of career and single season records. Good end Willie Marshall would reassert his claim as the top wide receiver in the East. And Paul Palmer would reach new heights, the ultimate showcase for this multi-dimensional All-American performer. This group had consistently posted landmark offensive numbers. But on this day, the firepower was to line up on both sides of the football as Temple University hosts the Boston College Eagles.
the Owls win the toss. Coach Bruce Arians elects to give his offensive unit the day's first opportunity. Paul Palmer accepts the opening kickoff at the 14. Dribbles, then brings it back 18 yards to the 32, first and 10 Temple. On the day's first play, outstanding design. Lee Saltz will play fake to Palmer as Shelley Poole allows defensive end Eric Lindstrom to roll by. He sets up in the flat. A nice touch on the screen, and Poole has daylight. Cutting back for 26 yards to the Eagles, 42. Two plays later, Palmer comes in motion. It's another screen pass. This time, Paul rolls for 11 yards, first down at the 30. But on the ensuing play, a rarity. As the football pops from the arms of Palmer, strong safety Carl Creshpain is on it. The Eagles' defense has forced the day's first break. Senior quarterback Sean Halloran had lost his job early this season, but has come back to play simply outstanding football. Early on, he would fill the air, and the Eagles would move. First play, Halloran drills the slant to senior flanker Kelvin Martin, 15 yards, first down. Next play, Halloran in the flat for senior tailback Troy Stratford, whose running ability turns a short gain into a 26-yard hookup, first and 10 BC at the Owls 36. Then Halloran, mixing his receivers effectively, finds Tom Waddle on the hook down to the 7-yard line. Finally, with three wide receivers right, Halloran goes back over the middle to Martin once more. The textbook opening foray is complete, 7-0 Boston College midway through quarter number one. On Temple's next possession, the senior combo hits as Saltz finds Willie Marshall for 13 yards first down. But on third and seven, Saltz retreats and is sacked by All-American John Boza. BC is back in business. From the 32, Halloran hands to Stratford, who finds a small seam at the point of attack. He cuts left to avoid two would-be tacklers, and from there, it is a foot race, won easily by Stratford, a 67-yard touchdown burst to give the Eagles a 14-0 lead, only nine minutes into the contest. The Owls must make something happen on the ensuing kickoff. Palmer gives the Owls good field position. From the 34, Lee Saltz rolls and keeps four yards, a key first down. Then Saltz bobbles the snap, but still delivers to Palmer, who gets nine yards and a first down at the BC 27. Next play, Salt the play fake. Standout Keith Gloucester makes a lovely cut to the corner, a picture-perfect 27-yard score. It is BC 14, the Owls 7, late in quarter number one. It in small chunks. First over left tackle, a six-yard gain. Then Salt hooks up with Willie Marshall, another nine-yard pickup to get the Owls inside the BC 30. And back to Palmer once more. The toss around right end will cover eight yards. A five-yard surge up the middle means first and goal for Temple. One play later, the design quarterback draw from Lee Saltz, five yards to the doorstep. Now to the wishbone formation. Paul Palmer will sacrifice his body up and over touchdown Temple. 21-14, five minutes into quarter number two. Weeks and has Marshall in front of the soft Boston College coverage, third and two. Next play, the misdirection to Todd McNair. He's a yard short of the first down. It sets up a fourth and one from the 33. A unique play selection allows two senior stars to combine on a moment to remember. We had made a couple fourth downs, made a couple third downs on them, and uh, they were expecting Paul to get the ball or making the average on the swoop, and that really would get single coverage. And uh, we could block well enough to let Paul set himself and throw the ball, and that's exactly what he did. And he told him, just put it up there and Willie will go get it. And Willie turned the man around and made a great catch. 1986 has been filled as much with great pain as great catches for Willie Marshall. Shoulder problems coupled with a series of leg injuries have meant less playing time and fewer catches. But in his final home game, his brilliance was on display. Marshall shed the pain to showcase his talent and courage, repeatedly going over the middle to make the grab and absorb the hit. But Marshall attributes his success inside to experience and his quarterback. Well, what happens is uh, it's a read. If it's a blitz, we're, we're trying to uh, get the ball off quick so Lee doesn't you know, have to drop back too far. Like a hot read. I saw 
the uh, strong safety come up and, and blitz. So it's basically just a three-step in, in route. And Lee, ha Lee and I just make eye contact. You know, he reads. He was, he was making some great throws. He, was, he made some excellent, excellent throws. And some great reads. Despite the recent injuries, Marshall's career has not been overlooked by the various all-star committees. He's accepted invitations to both the prestigious Hula Bowl and the Blue-Gray game, giving Marshall the chance to compete with and against the best seniors in the nation. It is an opportunity Marshall might not have thought possible when he arrived at Temple University. My first year here, we were, we were young, we were immature. We really didn't have too much poise in, in, in critical situations, I guess evident by our record. And uh, we, we really were a very smart, a very good football team. But over the years, we, we've upgraded the program to the point where we're playing quality football against you know, top 10, top 20 teams and playing well with, you know, with an equal chance to win. It's like we're going into games overmatched. You know, and I definitely, definitely believe that we didn't have that a few years ago. You know, and I, I'm a sincere believer that three years from now we're going to be you know, that much further. You know, the, the close ones that we lose to the Boston Colleges, the Penn States, I do believe those games will be you know, the close ones that they'll be chasing us from behind. The Palmer to Marshall connection brought the Owls within seven and fired up the defense. First, Stratford stopped for a yard on first down. Then third and nine, Halloran fades. He's sandwiched by end Chris Eady and tackle Mike Johnson. For the first time all day, the Owls defense has held the Eagles. Temple back on offense from midfield. First play, the fake to Palmer. Saltz goes for the home run to Willie Marshall. The pass is Tim. It hits Willie on the right knee and is intercepted by strong safety Mike Williams. He brings it out of the end zone, back to the BC 30. And back to work goes Halloran. With lots of time to throw, he comes underneath the Owls' deep zone to Waddle, an 18-yard gain into the Owls' territory. Then another key third and long, Halloran fades. Quick up the middle, pressure comes from Andy Papalardo, but Halloran escapes to the sideline. It's a 13-yard pickup and a first down. With time running down, Halloran fades and sees Tom Waddle run a precision post corner. He's got it for a touchdown. Two offensive machines have posted 56 points in 30 minutes. The first half closes. Boston College 35, the Temple Owls 21. The Owls take over at their own 38. But on their first play, Lee Saltz fades. He's flushed from the pocket and hangs up a floater for Keith Gloucester, intercepted by strong safety Carl Creshpain, his second of the day, first down Eagles at the 47-yard line. Now on the ground, the Eagles begin to move. Jim Bell right up the middle, he bursts for 13 yards. Then on third and 17 from the 32, Halloran drops, avoids the inside containment, and bolts for 14 yards. He's shy of the first down, but in perfect position for a 34-yard Brian Lowe field goal. It splits the uprights. Five minutes into the second half, Boston College leads 38-21. It would prove to be a pivotal three points. The Owls begin from their own 13 with more vintage Paul Palmer. Seemingly stacked up at the line, he escapes. And only a shoestring tackle prevents a breakaway, but it's a 14-yard gain. On third down, Saltz tries to set the screen, but Eric Lindstrom breaks through cleanly. The Owls must give it up once more. Now, though, the defenses are dominating. Troy Stratford moving left is strung out, hammered for just a one-yard gain. And a third down passing effort, Halloran seeking Dombrowski is well overthrown. In 11 minutes of action, only four third quarter first downs. The Owls begin to march deep in their own territory. Once again, the senior connection salts the out pattern to Willie Marshall, who turns it up inside for 13 yards. Then Paul Palmer, the quick toss left, gets to the corner. It's a nine yard pickup. Three plays later, third and six, again, Palmer moves left. Cuts it back for five yards. It is fourth and one. From the wishbone, strength versus strength. Palmer off right tackle. With second effort, has five yards and first down in BC territory. But on third down, the Eagles blitz both inside linebackers. Bill Romanowski comes through untouched. A 12-yard sack. The third quarter belongs to the defense. It ends Boston College 38, Temple 21. As the fourth quarter opens, yet another hookup, Saltz to Marshall. Willie showing great courage, cuts to the inside, 
takes the hit, and Temple's all-time leading receiver has a 16-yard pickup. However, two plays later, a fumbled center snap leads to a late pitch to Palmer. Romanowski recovers at the Temple 29-yard line. The Eagles in position for a put-away score. But on third down, Troy Stratford tries the right side. He gets a couple, but is well short of the first down. Lowe will attempt another 34-yarder. This one, though, is why the Owls are alive. With 10 minutes remaining, a long march is essential. First and 10 from the 30, Saltz reads the blitz, he'll audible at the line of scrimmage, fade, then hit the short-handed one, Andy Garzinski, on the quick out for 13 yards. Then the delay to Palmer, now approaching 200 yards, he cuts right and has 14 into Eagle territory. It is a career day for Marshall, who runs yet another over-the-middle slant. Saltz is right on target for 16 yards, first down at the 17-yard line. Third and four, Saltz in the flat for backup tight end Mike Johnson, first and goal at the seven. And now a crowning moment for the nation's leading rusher. Paul Palmer takes the pitch left, but there is no daylight. An instinctive reversal, and he has a picket line to the two, where he absorbs a vicious helmet to his right hip. Bounces off and scores. The career of Paul Palmer in microcosm, as he done what needs to get done to find himself in the end zone. The score, though, would be a costly one, with 333 total yards on the day. A hip pointer closes out this Saturday for the Heisman Football. Down now, 38-27, Arians elects to go for two. Salt retreats, rolls right, pumps, then comes back left for fullback Shelley Poole, who juggles and pulls in the pass for two. It is BC 38, Temple 29, with six minutes remaining. The offense will need the ball twice, and now the special teams must deliver. Billy Wright tees it up. He hits the classic pooch, a perfect pop-up run under by defensive end Chris Eady. It's been called one of the finest onside kicks ever witnessed, and the Owls are alive. Third and 15 at the 48. For the ninth time today, Saltz locates Willie Marshall, once more in traffic, this time for 18 yards to the BC 34. Then, on second down, Saltz will thread the needle to Garzinski, who shakes a tackler and burrows for 23 yards at a first down at the BC 11. With Palmer on the bench, Arians goes to back up Todd McNair on back-to-back -back runs, each one covering two yards. It is third down at the seventh. Here, Saltz runs the weak side option with his tight end as the pitch man. He keeps and ducks inside for four. It is fourth and three at the two. Quickly, the Owls field goal unit takes the field. But quarterback Saltz ducks into the huddle with apparent instructions. After several seconds, the Owls call timeout for a more formal reading. The Owls then line up for three. Garzinski takes the snap, but it's a fake. A shovel pass inside for Johnson. The ball never reaches his hands. The Eagles have landed on the football at the five-yard line. The Owls' final hope has vanished. On a day when the two teams evenly split nearly 1,000 total offense yards, it is Boston College which emerges a winner. Final score, BC 38, the Temple Owls 29. It's a fitting day for a farewell. It is all on the line at Rutgers Stadium. The always fierce rivalry, the Owls versus the Scarlet Knights, is set with a winning season as first prize. A tip of the hat to the Owl seniors, who stand 60 minutes, one victory away from closing out a winning season. A defense lined with seniors, many four-year starters, who have taken the Owls to respectability, face that final challenge. An All-American, Paul Palmer, stifled by a painful hip pointer, has stretched the horizons of the Bruce Arians era, preparing for a curtain call. But it is equally a day for the passing of the baton, from upperclassmen to the younger players, players who see their roles about to crystallize in 1987. It is said that that last moment clings to a player forever, and this collection of owls insists on walking away with heads held high. And the Scarlet Knights are the lone obstacle. Seniors oh, lead the Owls to the final battleground of the season. Owls special teams captain Keith Armstrong, a rare miscue, it comes up tails. The Scarlet Knights will have the day's first possession. Billy Wright's end-over-end kickoff, fielded by Billy Cobb at the four. He brings it up the middle, is nailed at the 17 by Arturo Weldon, first down Rutgers. 
first play, a toss right for Matt Prescott. But senior Frank Bonjavingo, who saved his best for last, avoids the blocker, makes the hit a one-yard line. His team leading fourth of the year, the Owls with the first major break, first down at the Rutgers 44. Bruce Arians elects to go right for it, and Lee Saltz, the steady senior quarterback, retreats and hangs it high for Keith Broster. It is just beyond his reach. Third and seven, Saltz from the spread formation, an excellent read on the inside hook for Broster, first down to the 24. To the wishbone, and Paul Palmer slashes the right side for four yards to the 20. Third and three, again the wishbone, a fake to Ventress Stevenson, and Saltz reads Broster in one-on-one -on -one coverage. A perfect throw yields a touchdown. Four minutes in, the Owls lead 6-0. A five-step drop is flushed from the pocket, stops, drills a bullet to tight end Mike Hinnett, 17 yards, first down. From there, the Owls turn to Paul Palmer, who can manage only seven yards total on three successive inside runs. It leaves a fourth down for the Owls at the Rutgers 18-yard line. In comes Billy Wright out of the Andy Garzinski hold. The low line drive is true. Nearly 12 minutes gone by, the Owls are leading 9-0. Second in goal, they give to Prescott a full somersault and a touchdown. Three minutes into the second quarter, Temple is leading 9-7. A picture-perfect strike to Keith Gloucester, who can waltz home with a 70-yard touchdown. One play, nine seconds, touchdown Temple. Billy Wright begins a new extra point streak. It's 16-7 Owls. Scott finally goes up and over for a score. As expected, a ferocious, tight contest has developed, and at that time, the Owls cling to a 16-14 lead. Palmer, closing in on a series of once-in-a-lifetime season and career marks, was held to just 28 yards in 12 carries. But early in the third quarter, he takes the Owls down the field. From the 26, Palmer takes the pitch right, turns it upfield, a nine-yard gain. Then the man called Boo Boo slashes off left guard, 10 yards, first down, near midfield. On third and three from the 48, on the option right, salts to Palmer, who follows tight end Maurice Johnson for seven yards. Next play, Palmer up the middle for a yard, but there's an off-the-ball personal foul penalty on the night. The Owls move down to the 25-yard line, first down. Here, though, the drive bogs as Saltz feeds. He's right on target to Keith Broster, but Keith juggles. It's incomplete. On comes Billy Wright to attempt a 36-yarder. It is good. He's two for two on the day. The Owls lead 19-14. Ernie Rillis left, looks, looks, and turns it for the corner. A touchdown. With six minutes left in the third quarter, Rutgers leads for the first time, 20 to 19. Square out for Gloucester, 13 yards to the 29. On second down, the senior connection, Salt low, where only the hands of Willie Marshall can pull it in, 14 yards and a first down. Then Salt's the quick three-step drop, the post for Andy Garzinski, nine yards to the six. And two plays later, Saltz will option right, find running room, and score an Al touchdown. Unsigned by Steve Dominoski, and tosses on the run. Intercepted by Frank Bonjavingo, his third of the season. The Owls, with a touchdown, will put this one away. From the 47, Saltz drops, surveys, then checks off the fullback Shelley Poole. A seven-yard gain, but a face mask penalty brings the Owls to the Rutgers 32. Then Paul Palmer spots a seam. He dives through for seven yards to the 25. On third and three, Saltz drops again. This time it's a design pass for Shelley Poole, who rumbles back across field for 16 yards to the Rutgers nine. The Owls, though, can't punch it home, as Saltz's third down pass for Keith Foster on the quick post is tipped and falls incomplete. Sophomore Billy Wright will complete a remarkable season, his third field goal of the day, a 26-yarder. The Owls lead 29-22. Fourth and 10, Ernie feeds, feels the blitz and tosses for the corner, well overthrown. The celebration is underway on the Owls' sidelines. The seniors will have that final day to remember after all. The Owls beat the Knights 29-22 and post a winning season. Mary, I, I can't say I have been for the seniors. You guys have done so much for this program. You young players, we were here two years ago and we let it go backwards. We let it go backwards on Tim Haley and some of those seniors. Brian Slade and those guys. You make your mind up, you're going to start stringing winning seasons together all the time. We're not going to wait till next year. We're going to start Monday. 
Right. And we ain't coming short of any bowl games next year because there won't be any excuses again. Right. Whatever it takes to win, because winning is all there is. Right. You're winning. And let's build on it. Have no fun. Well, every time Temple and Rutgers get together, it's going to go to the wire and be a heart beater, heartbreaker, and everything else. This time we came out on top and broke the history. Every other team's won in over 10 years, and uh, I was scared death coming in here. I knew how tough they were. A great defense shut us down pretty good in the first half. We came up with the big play, though, and uh, you know, we've been able to do that all the time. When we do that this year, we've been able to win. Final fitting farewell to the class of 87. Game breakers and program makers, each in their own way has fueled the rebuilding process. An entire high-flying defensive secondary, from the hard hitters, Purvis Herter and Larry Bruton, to the sure-handed one, Frank Bongiovingo, the little man who rose to each occasion, John Smith, and the center field bandit, Terry Wright. A scratch and a claw from defensive end Jeff Ward. A core group of senior linebackers, all fit the image of Temple football to a T. D'Amico, Dominowski, Pilkoskis. The image of Temple as Eastern football's hardest hitters has grown. Special teams leadership from Captain Keith Armstrong and vintage memories from a straight-on kicker named Cooper. A landmark collection of skilled position players whose names will be remembered for decades on North Broad Street, Poole and Saltz and Willie Marshall. Each has etched in stone his place in the annals of Owls football history and each will be missed. And the ultimate thoroughbred, a legendary once-in-a-generation record breaker whose contributions to this program will continue long after his final carry has been duly recorded. Paul Boo Boo Palmer, simply America's best. The nation's leading rusher wears number six, attends Temple University, and answers to the name Boo Boo. Kind of came from uh, Yogi Bear's little, little pal Boo Boo, but I like to think it was a cute name for a cute kid. <laughs> to the defense, Paul Palmer is more than a cute kid. He's durable, determined, quick, and more than willing to work for his success. Ever since Paul's been here, I can never remember him having a bad practice. I think he has that drive to prove that he can be the best. The best on the ground in college football. Palmer's all-purpose yardage in 1986, running, receiving, and kick returns was higher than anyone who ever played the game. Proud owner. 23 Temple offensive records. Palmer is Mr. Everything to the Owls' attack. A lot of people don't think that I can do this and do that, and by the end of the game, they realize that I can. They pitch the ball back to Palmer. He may throw it. Throws out of the moon. He lobs a high pass to Marshall. Marshall makes a great catch, and tumbles into the end zone for a touchdown. What fourth the two. Third and goal on the one. They've eaten up a lot of time. Here's the dive by Palmer. Over the top and he scores. Over for the touchdown from the one-yard line. 
Paul Palmer finishes his Temple career as the sixth all-time rusher in NCAA history. And that puts him in some pretty esteemed company. A proud night indeed for Temple's Paul Pump. In the Blue Gray Classic in Montgomery, Alabama, he whips off 166 yards against some of the best college defensive players in America. An incredible performance by the Owls All-American running back. Look at this effort right here, breaking tackles, straight arming people. Paul Palmer was a master tonight as the Blue whipped the Gray 31 to 7. He scores there and Paul Palmer gets his just reward. The Temple Owl player was the game's most valuable player. And it couldn't happen to a nicer young man and if the Pro Scouts didn't think he was a first round choice before tonight, they do now. For a guy you know, Paul Palmer. Did he do something today? He was the most valuable player. 166 yards and 21 carries. A 49 yard run. Scored two touchdowns. He'll play on the Hula and the Senior. And it looks very much after this game, if the rest of the world weren't flavors, he was runner-up in the Heisman. He has got to go in the first round. He's not big enough. He's not strong enough. But I think he's fast enough and durable enough. In the draft today, Temple's Paul Palmer was the fourth running back pick today, 19th overall. The Kansas City Chiefs select on their first round pick, running back, Paul Palmer, Temple. The situation that I'm going in is exactly like the situation it was when I went to, uh, went to Temple. New coaching staff, uh, a young offensive line, and what have you. But I think with a little patience and a little hard work, I think things can work out pretty well for uh, Casey and myself.